y'all, Great Today Gaming, and welcome to something a little new. This is Curse Introduces, the show in which I try to introduce you guys to a game, set of games, or an entire franchise. And you know what? I want to start off this series with a game that just recently got its fifth mainline game at the time of um, you know this video coming out, and it's as old as Final Fantasy itself. That franchise being Megami Tensei. The Megami Tensei franchise is a long-running franchise, which originally started as a trilogy of novels, but soon exploded into a plethora of games, spin-offs, animes, and more. The franchise, as stated before, is as old as Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, and compared to those two franchises, Megami Tensei has more depth, not only in gameplay, but in story and atmosphere as well. Megami Tensei is unique due to it featuring demons from various folk tales and religious readings, but it's also unique for its gameplay, which allows you to recruit demons to be used as allies, it can be fused into stronger demons, has a larger emphasis on using buffs and debuffs, and alongside that, the majority of these games have multiple endings known as alignments, featuring law, chaos, and neutrality. And for how long this franchise has been going on for, American audiences wouldn't be able to play a single SMT game until 2004. Well, technically we did get Jack Frost first in 1995, so... That yeah, might have been our first Mega game. Maybe? Now, now, I know some of y'all are going to hate hearing this, but the reason why Megami Tensei managed to come to the West is thanks to his spin off franchise, Persona and Jack Bros. And with the fifth game pretty much already out, it's a perfect time to get into the franchise and experience the games. Okay, so let's get down to business. And before we talk about the gameplay, what games to play, and so on and so forth, let's talk about how this franchise started. In 1986, an author by the name of Aya Nishitani will publish the novel Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei. It focuses on a highly intelligent high school student named Akemi Nakajima, who creates a demon summoning program to get revenge on his bullies. But after being manipulated by Loki, Nakajima, alongside a female student named Yumiko Shirasaki, has to stop Loki from unleashing demons into the world. The novel was a huge success that led into two more wild ass sequels, an anime OVA, and two separate video game adaptations. Now, these game adaptations were made by two separate companies, Telenet Japan and a newly formed company known as Atlas. Telenet Japan was responsible for making an action adventure game, meanwhile Atlas was making a JRPG. Okay, so pop quiz. Which version of Megami Tensei was more popular? The one created by Telenet Japan or the one created by Atlas? I'll give y'all a couple seconds. Alright, so, you guys got your answers? Alright, so, the person that was the most popular was the Telenet Japan. Okay, wait. Shit, that was the wrong page. Let me just God damn it. Okay, there we go. Was the version created by Atlas. Digital Devil Story Magami Tensei was released in Japan for the Famicom in September 11th, 1987. This version was created by Atlas and features part of the legendary team behind early Megaten games being Koji Okada, Kazunari Suzuki, and Tsukasa Masuko. Now, compared to the version created by Telenet Japan, Atlas's version was an RPG that took major inspiration from Wizardry, a first-person Western RPG. Everything from the game's first-person perspective to the combat was adapted, but to avoid making it a complete copy of Wizardry, Atlas implemented a demon negotiation system, which allowed for the player to recruit demons to use in battle. Now, demons couldn't level up, instead you had to go to these locations known as Jack Hill Mansion in order to fuse them together to create stronger demons. Plus, these demons would take a magnetite while they were in the party, add the ability to customize your character's stat every time you level up, and other special elements, and boom, you get the version that was extremely successful to the point in which Koji Akata and his team went to work on the next game. Instead of it being an adaptation of the novels, the team decided to go for an original story, which resulted in 1990's Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei 2, released as well for the Famicom. And this game will be the debut of everybody's favorite artist, Kazuma Kaneko. This time, the game focuses on two unnamed protagonists who gets roped into a conflict between <laughs> Lucifer. This game greatly improved on a lot of elements from the original game, giving the gameplay more depth, as well as introducing alignments. The success of this game soon led to Atlas buying the rights to the franchise, and soon, in 1992, we got Shin Megami Tensei for the Super Famicom, and from that point on, the rest is history. This right here was a basic overview of the franchise, because from that point on, everything just explodes. 
into different other spinoffs. You have Persona, you got Majin Tensei, you eventually get Devil Survivor, Digital Devil Saga. There's just long story short, there is a lot of franchises. And not only that, oh god, if I did a whole history of this video, it would take forever. So for the sake and ease of myself and also for you guys, let's just get on to the gameplay. The Mega Ten franchise has several gameplay styles, though they do have the same basis of combat. Oh shit. Okay, um, we might need to go to a, a bigger room for this. BRB. So, for how long the Mega Ten franchise has been going on, there is a bunch of games from a bunch of genres, some with improvements, some without. But, for this uh, video, we're only going to be talking about two of them. So, the first one is the classic Mega Ten gameplay from the Retro game. I'm taking this shit off because it's making my hands sweaty, Jesus Christ. This features the majority of the groundwork that will be seen and improved on in following games. In classic Mega 10 games, there are first person dungeon crawlers and one thing you might notice is that the main character can't use magic, instead they're able to summon demons through their comps. Meanwhile, the other human characters can use magic, and in every classic Mega 10 game you can summon up to 4 demons inside your party, overall having a party of 6 with one member being a human companion. Other than that, the gameplay structure is simple, featuring basic combat that you might see in Dungeons and Dragons, Final Fantasy, etc. But the unique element in these games are the negotiations, which is based around selecting specific answers to eventually recruit demons. Now, the success of negotiations is determined by the moon phases. From the new moon to the full moon, demons become more aggressive and harder to negotiate with. However, from the full moon to the new moon, demons become less aggressive and easier to negotiate with, and there's variations to it. Probably the most well-known variation comes from the original Devil Summoner games that feature a more complex system of recruiting demons known as the Demon Loyalty System, which is both interesting and annoying. Now, the second gameplay style is the one that we all love and we all hate is the new style that's been here since Nocturne, the Press Turn System. Yay, fuck. The Press Turn System is a system that involves you having to exploit the enemy's weakness to get extra turns. If the enemy dodges, voids, reflect, or straight up block an attack, you lose two turns and this also applies to the enemy as well. And this shit can get very, very stressful. And here's the thing to think about. When it comes down to the press turn system, if you fucked up, either by missing a turn, or by, you know, hey, I didn't exploit the enemy's weakness, or hey, the enemy just exploited my weakness, you, my friend, are fucked. And you're gonna end up like this dude right here. Do you really want to end up like him? Every Mega Ten game adapts this system but in different ways. Devil Survivor allows extra turns by not only exploiting the enemy's attacks but also resisting it. Persona takes the system by allowing the character to go again and if they knock down all the enemies they can do an all out attack and deal massive damage. And finally, Strange Journey takes the press turn system and morphs it into the demon co-op system, which allows for both your character and a demon to do an unblockable attack. These two systems are some of the more well known ones and there's others as well but I'm not gonna dive into those can of worms because fuck that. Okay, so with that shit out the way, let's go on talking about the one last thing before we get on to what games should you play. The most important thing of most Megami Tensei games, alignments. Yay. Starting in the second Megami Tensei, we were introduced to alignments, which can be affected by your choices throughout the game's story and even the demons you get throughout the game. And the alignments themselves are pretty simple. Yeah, I had to pull out the laptop for this one. This is actually part of my script. Anyway, so the first alignment that we have, ladies and gentlemen, is the law. You see, law has you side with God. This big man right here, lovable face man, love you man. Anyway, though, as it says here, he has the goal of building a thousand year kingdom. Yeah, if he uh, builds that and you side with him, then uh, just understand that all of humanity is going to be, and I quote, Subjected to strict and absolute rule. Yeah. Alright, so next. We have Chaos. You see, Chaos is you teaming up with the big man Lucifer, the fallen angel, the underdog of this story. Kind of. Not really. It's weird. It's weird. Anyway, though, it says here you know, Lucifer wants to create a world of total anarchy where everyone is free to do what the fuck they want. Literally. If you want to go and commit tax evasion, you commit tax evasion. Not saying you should, though. Please do not listen to what I'm saying. And the third final one is neutral. You see, neutral is more based on personal freedom. Basically, humanity says, fuck God and fuck Lucifer. 
we get to rebuild the world ourselves. You know why? Because we, as humans, together are strong. And for what I said, that is bullshit. But you know what? It's true if you see America lately. <laughs> so, these three elements for the most part don't really change that much, and if they do, then they kind of have slight changes. Some seem better than the other, but overall, it's based on your own personal opinion. Now, if you want my advice on what it's aligning to do, then my friends, do neutral chaos. This also affects gameplay, and depending on your alignment, it can make things either easier or harder for you, both in the amount of bosses to fight and the demons you can recruit. Later games retain it, but adds more nuance to it. The most popular example is Nocturne, which has reasons. These reasons are ideologies used to create a quote unquote perfect world. Yosuga being social Darwinism incarnate, Sejima being based on nihilism and the complete removal of the individual, and Musubi, which is based around being separated and handling the woes of life by yourself. It's also rejection, but we're not going to talk about that one until we talk about Nocturne itself. All of these makes the game very interesting and oftentimes provoke multiple playthroughs to see each ending in its completion. Now, besides Devil Survivor, Monster Tensei 2, Raido Kusunoha vs. King Abaddon, and Devil Survivor 2, the other spin-off games either don't use alignments at all or use them for gameplay and nothing else. Hmm. Okay, let me check some Alright, let's see. Uh, we talked about the uh, franchise in the beginning, we talked about the gameplay, we talked about online anything else. Okay, yeah, so you know, let me... Alright, so! Oh, this is the moment you guys have been waiting for. So, how does one get into Megami Tensei, you may be wondering. Alright, so let's make this simple and say you should play the Persona games first. If you want to, mind you. The Persona games is a great way to get into Megaton, as these games retain the difficulty and gameplay of the mainline games while being familiar yet different to newcomers. Now, what if you're a Final Fantasy fan looking to get into Megami Tensei? Then, well, Digital Double Saga is a great game to start with. This duality has everything that makes a Megaton game a Megaton game, but it does so in a way that it doesn't alienate those fans. Plus, narratively and musically, the game is really good. Just know that this one is a little bit more difficult, but not too bad. If you decide to save up all of those games, then you can start off with Nut. The game that is often heralded as the Dark Souls of JRPGs, even though I don't really believe that, but anyway. This game features the press turn system that will be a staple of the franchise, plus it's a challenging game that might make you enjoy JRPGs even more, or even less. Now, if you want to deal with, you know, classic Mega 10, then my personal opinion is to start with Strange Journey and Soul Hacker, because these don't really have, you know, the bullshit from the original. Kind of. And if you have a 3DS or you can emulate it, then you should play Shin Megami Tensei 4, because it's actually pretty beginner friendly and it's still challenging at the same time. Other than that though, in terms of like, you know, other games to try out, really it's just up to you. It's up to what you uh, are comfortable experiencing for the most part, or you want to experience. The main thing to know is that the older games can only really be played via fan translation, as they've never been brought here to America besides once back in 2014. In terms of the older Mega Ten games, I do recommend playing all of them, though in my personal opinion, I do recommend playing Shin Megami Tensei If, the Majin Tensei Duology, and maybe Kyoko Megami Tensei, kind of. If you love playing grueling JRPGs, other than that, play Shin Megami Tensei 1. And as for tips, um, make sure when you play the game, you embrace the grind, and you look up a guide specifically for a map. Why, man? This will help you a lot. Trust me. <sighs> cool. Anyway, though, thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. So, without further ado, the next video is going to be the beginning of the Mega Ten Marathon. And for the most part, the first game is going to be on the Digital Devil Saga games that came out for the Famicom. Specifically, though, Kuyaku Magami Tensei, and I'll go more in detail on that when we uh, get to the review. So I will give you guys a heads up, these videos are going to take a little longer to come out just because these games are JRPGs. So please bear with me, it's going to be a minute, plus with finals and stuff, it's I, I've been busy so hopefully I can get all that stuff out of the way, hopefully. But like always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to stay safe and stay vibing my guys.